something. But I'm saying for most people, when they tell me, yo, I never got arrested for graffiti. Like, it's usually because they didn't do enough of it. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top fives, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Street culture. Killer podcast. Central London Essentials, you need to be. We are going out into the, the far reaches over to Miami to see a gentleman. And oh my gosh, I'm very lucky. But big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. We have inside a bit of a don, a bit of a global sensation, street artist, fantastical, the man like Chris Riggs. How are you, brother? Oh, doing great. Thanks for that wonderful introduction. That's the best introduction I've ever had in my life. <laughs> they will be delighted to know more, I'm telling you, man. I mean, I love London. You know, I'm always, I'm trying to go there now. You know, I can't wait for this lockdown to be over. Yeah, no. But London, London right now with street art and graffiti art, London is, London is jumping right now. You go to some neighborhoods, it's like, it's like the 80s and the 70s in New York City. It's like graffiti's everywhere, you know, and it's like, it's like people don't know what they got. You know, people may look at it like, oh, it's, you know, I mean, you know, the small the small percentage, like people who do it and love it and everything, like we love it. But I'm just saying the general public, like, you know, it's art. It's art. You know, people want to say it's ugly. It's like, I think more what's ugly is like these advertisements. They're way more uglier. Yeah. I'd rather see some 11, 12, 13, 14 year old kid who's got some talent and he's like, yo, I'm going to, people going to know my name. I'm going to go, I'm going to go spray some, my name on the wall. You know, people are going to know who I am. There's 7 billion people on the planet. You know what I mean? You yeah. Do something for people to, to, to know your name. Like, so it's like, you know, I'd rather see some new kid coming up in the grab scene than see some corporate billboard trying to sell me, you know, another $2,000 phone. You totally just hit like a new way of thinking just in my head as you were saying i was like yeah you know what there's a heap of people out here what do you expect there not to be any graffiti like they should be more in theory there should be more graffiti is free speech graffiti is free speech that's what it really is that's why the government hates it so much that people have told me that people within the government have told me that sometimes they want graffiti writers more than murderers because of their freedom of speech their 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 freedom of speech I, I i don't know if it's for freedom of speech but if it's like you got billion dollar developers you know you got people spending a billion on this building and 2 billion on that building you know they don't want some they don't want some you know kid or some guy you know coming over there and tagging up everything you know what i mean <laughs> what the fuckers <laughs> yeah, yeah if somebody gets killed in some if some if some you know so somebody on drugs or someone gets killed in some alley they don't care but once you start writing all over their billion dollar properties they're gonna be looking for you you know yeah 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 yeah, yeah totally I, I did street art in front of trump's building and in front of the united nations and that, I got rolled up on. I had to go to court and everything. Fuck, hold on. So you did that? You did that in, in front of the Trump Tower? Yeah, I'm still I'm still doing illegal stuff. You know what I did in front of not in front of Trump Tower, but there he has another building next to the UN. Right. So I was hanging up Chris Riggs for mayor posters. That's right. I was like using three inch tape because I try to go into gray areas. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You don't have to do a spray a spray can of silver on, on the wall. You know, like I tried to go into a gray area. So I was like, let me make some Chris Ricks some mayor posters. Sick. Just to mess around. And then I got like three inch tape. Because the three inch tape, it lasts longer than we paste. You can we paste something. But the three uh. inch tape, it like seals. You know, if you press it on and tape <laughs> the whole thing, yeah, yeah. it like seals it. You know, it could last like 10 years if nobody rips it down. 
Damn. Because it's tape, but because it's tape, it's it's like, oh, it's not permanent. So if the cops roll up, you just be like, oh, it's not permanent. You know, like it just comes right off, you know? And then like, yeah. I was putting them up in front of the UN and all the rich areas. I was going to like neighborhoods that had no street art, like in Manhattan. I was going to all the rich areas and hanging them up. Yeah. Then finally I hung up, I was like, I hung up, I was hanging up hundreds of them and I couldn't <laughs> believe I was getting away with it. I was like, yo, I can't believe I'm getting away with it. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, fuck it. I was like, went by the UN and and Trump and the Trump has a building next to the United Nations. I hung up all around. There was like lunchtime. I was doing this during the day. Yeah. There was all delegates and stuff outside and like this little, little park thing that uh, that's across the street from the UN. So all the delegates were there. They saw me like hanging up Chris Rick's and Mayor. So then I go down a <laughs> couple more blocks yeah. and then uh it's funny too. One of the posters it lasted right in front of the UN for like, I don't know if it's still there, but it was there for like six or seven years. Oh my god! And finally, I'm like down an avenue next to the FDR, <laughs> more like an industrial block away from a couple blocks from the UN, and the cops roll up, bloop bloop. They're like, "What are you doing?" Blah blah blah. Oh, shit. Oh, and they're like, "That's the thing. Don't ever talk to the police because they tripped me up because they were like." I was like, oh, I'm running for mayor. They're like, oh, the election's not for another three years. Damn. Like, oh, I'm starting early or whatever. And then they were like, and then they were like, oh, but, you know, the posters ain't going to be around in three years. And then they tripped me up. And then I was like, I was like, oh, no, they're last. And then they were like, oh, I thought it wasn't permanent. Blah, 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 blah. And then they gave me like a ticket to go to court. <sighs> but, um, wow. But, um, you know, what happened in the punk rock scene, like, you know, growing up as a punk in New York, like later on, a lot of punks became cops. Oh, what? Say that again? They became cops? Yeah, isn't that crazy? Yeah. I know a couple of punks, like they joined the army. Some of them became cops. This dude who used to play in my band, I used to sing for a punk rock band, too, and this... The dude who's playing guitar, he's driving a tank right now in Iraq. Like, I don't know how he ended up there. Is that like, does that punk angst that's just the, 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 the authoritative anarchic suddenly gets compromised? They have to be like, they have to be like controlled a little bit to, to their tempers or something. You know what it is? It's like, I guess it's just, you know, people just one day people all the way on the left and the next day they're all the way on the right. Yeah. You know? I would say I would say co comedy and art, but it's more primarily graffiti and street art. I feel like they're the last bastions of of free speech, and you know what I'm saying. They're the last creative outlet for uh, for the arts that, that that can speak to from an anarchic f f place of freedom. You know what I mean? Yeah, just like I tell you know, I, it's 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 really is freedom of speech because they got. You know, they got cheap cans, whatever. You could get like a cheap black can for like a dollar. You get two you get two cheap black cans for two dollars. Yeah. You know, how many tags can you do with that? How many sentences can you do with that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. For two dollars, you can have all this, you know, people are gonna see what you think. Yeah. So you just have to have you just have to have the courage to go do it because yeah, you know yeah. it's it's not it's not easy. Like from yeah. it's like people you know, it's like, it's like, you know, once you hit the streets, it's not only police. You got police, you got gangs, you got snitches, crazy people. Yeah. You know, you, you got heroes, you know, yeah. like some big giant buff dudes that see you spray paint and they're like, hey, get him. Like, people roll up on you even if it's legal. Like, I was painting in London one wall and um, I just got into it. So I was painting the whole night and I was there by myself, but like some, yo, know, some giant dude, some giant gym guy came and he was like, somebody tagged up on my wife's car and blah, blah, blah. What? Blamed on you. It's like generalizing a street artist. Like, oh, it was pink. And I see you got pink paint. I was like, I was like, come on, dude. I was like, I was, yeah. I was like, I'm here working on a mural thing. I'm going to go ride on somebody's car. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I've got all this space. I've got this thing I'm doing, and you're just like coming in and presuming that I would do that. I know you. 
Yeah, but like, if if I didn't convince him, like we would have been like going at it. And and the thing is, is like, I already had painted the whole mural, so I was exhausted. Yeah. You know, people are smart. You know, like gangsters. Like gangsters are smart. Like let's say somebody don't like you or whatever, they're not gonna roll up on you when you first start the mural and you just all rested. They're gonna wait till like you painted the whole thing. Then mm. yo yo, you know what I mean? Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then they'll come with like eight or nine people. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like that's why I never got into the gang thing. Like I had a lot of you know I'm tall and I used to study martial arts and stuff and I was doing graffiti. So when yeah. I hit all the gangs wanted me. But, like, the gangs who were, like, selling drugs and, like, fighting gangs like that, like, I would never join. I only joined, like, the crews who just, like, did straight up, like, graffiti. Anybody who was, like, fighting or anything like that, like, I yeah. never got involved in that. And I was always cool with everybody. And that's basically, you know, what kept me alive. Because, you know, in the late 70s and early 80s, like, it, New York, all of New York was just as bad as, like, you know, any of those towns and, and, and London, like those parts of London, like mm. it was like, you know, cause with London, at least like London's more of like a knife culture. Look, if somebody yeah. pulls out a knife on you, you could just jet, you could just run. Yeah. yeah. In New York, they, everybody had guns, you know, like, yeah, you can't run from a gun. Like it's true. Just gun you down. Like, also, there's a certain mentality with knives as well, which I find equally disturbing. Is like you're holding the end of something that you're feeling. You've got a force power in, and you're feeling it go in. You feel it takes a lot of quote unquote guts. Do you know what I mean? It's a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, but people would tell me about you know all the knife stuff in London. I didn't really have any trouble, but um. Mm. But I think it's always been like that in Europe. Remember in the olden days, people would have the swords? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Until <laughs> argument, they start sorting with each other. Allow me to thrust this knife into one's chest, you know, kind of shit. That, you mean that sort of thing? About the knives in London, I was like, it's always been like that in Europe, <laughs> you know, with the swords. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what the fuck difference, you know? Yeah, it's true, it's true. Um, <laughs> be happy there's no guns. Like, there's people, like, there's certain neighborhoods in America, you won't hear about it on the news, like, and you don't want to fuck with Dog on stuff like that where it's mm. just like military style weapons like it's crazy yeah like empty and like 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 the military you know like the police don't go there or nothing but you know so it's like these type of areas you're trying to paint in oh yeah and and again that just highlights the the threat the constant vigilance that you have to be on to to get a message across and yeah that's that's, but I can imagine you, Chris, as not being the kind of person that would. Okay, you you have to be in those those kind of terrains, but you you got a real good energy about you. You know, I can't imagine. Do you know what I mean? You don't operate on that wavelength. Oh yeah, yeah, no, you know, like yeah, just yeah. Um, you know, I'm just saying it's just funny to me. Like the general public doesn't know, like actually, you know, what yeah. you're actually going through. Like yeah, I'm, you know, I'm always for peace, and I'm always like that. You know, I'm always trying to, you know, just promote peace. Even when I was a kid, you know, and I was just, you know, never got involved in the fighting gangs yeah. or the drug selling gangs, just kept it with, like, I love the art. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I yeah. love the art. But, like, a lot of people mix it up. Like, they'll do graffiti, then they'll sell drugs, and they'll yeah, rob a store. You know what I mean? Like Transferable skills. Yeah, there's no rules, you know, like, mm -hmm. like, I just love the art, but, you know, we had a lot of other people that get into, like, everything, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's like, but with the, so I would feel bad because we would always have, like, like, our people, like, we would just do this every day. So, like, we would just, like, sh try to strategize ways to not get caught and, you know, like, you know, just stay below the radar like because that's equally as much an art as actually doing the the, the art <laughs> yeah but you don't want to teach bank robbers that your tricks you know, yeah true you got your graffiti tricks and then you think you're teaching another graffiti writer mm. how to stay below the radar and then you hear they're trying to rob banks or do this or sell drugs and this and that you know so it's like mm. 
So I just try to keep it, you know, graffiti. To me, it's art and it shouldn't be illegal. Mm-hmm. All of that, like, you know, in the 80s, like the drugs, like it, it killed, it killed New York. It killed yeah. a lot of artists and like a lot of great graffiti artists, like, mm. you know, like, like as the drugs like held them back, you know, because yeah. it's another thing, you're in the streets and there's, you, there's every type of drug and people are nervous. You know, you got the police looking for you. Mm. Or you got your ex-girlfriend looking for you. Mm. you no, know, like, so it's like, <laughs> so people, you know, they'll drink or take some drugs. to like try to, but we always kept it. Like our rule was like, was like, we didn't do any drugs. And like, when we were going to do graph, like we would go sober. Mm. Mm, that seems to be a narrative that yeah that seems to be a narrative that that people talk of on on this podcast quite a bit it's uh be, just being restrained be being very consciously aware of what's going on around your surroundings uh. yeah you have a couple of pints you're just like <laughs> waving you know, here tagging up there t- bloop 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 before you you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah, it's true and then like but uh but you know, it's it's just so much fun, you know. Like graffiti is fun, you know. I've I've done I've went to college and done studio art like that, and honestly, that was so boring compared to graffiti. Because graffiti, you going out like you get chased. If you get away, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> honestly, you know, like we used to jump the turnstile, and the police used to chase us. So you know, like. Yeah. Like to even check if the police was there in the 80s, you know, we would jump the turnstile. And then if there was cops there, they would start chasing us and we would just run to the tracks and then run on the tracks. And they were afraid to go on the tracks. Damn, that's crazy, Chris. Because you're 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 you were born mid-70s, weren't you? And so you would have been, you know, I guess come born in 73. Right. By 85, I was 12. And you were on it. It was yeah. So this, this was the '80s, and it was like so. Well, you you lived the best. You you. Uh, in, I mean, I know every every. No, I missed the best. I missed the best best by like five years. You reckon? At my age, like the guys who were, I was born in '73. So the guys who were born in the '60s, they were really killing it. But yeah, by the time we were teenagers, they were uh, the trains were buffed, and they were already buffing all the train stations. And Damn go it. paint the train station. And then um, the next day, they would paint over it. So you really caught the tail end, really? Huh? Yeah, it was just like a war yeah. with them. Like, we would go paint it. They would paint over it. We would go paint it. Then the train would stop, or we'd have our friends hold the doors. Yeah. And catch tags all over the train. Like, that was yeah. the only way to, to get it to run. Yeah. See, that's... So... You did literally miss that. Mm. But it was... But it was... Um, um, where everything was like, um, there was still some areas, you know, like Queens where I was, it was the first train that they claimed was a seven train. Really? So my train was the first mm. one to be claimed. So we still had all the old school guys and like, um, and the younger guys. And we would just go and like paint all the train stations, you know, and just, Mm. keep it at least try to keep it still on the train stations so then they yeah. they paint over it they wouldn't paint over it sometimes you know but um now it's just uh now it's actually starting to come back a little more like Are you seeing it more trains like old trains and stuff like i'm starting to see more in new york now especially with all this that's going on and uh the distraction you know the mayor Depends on the mayor, too. Some mayors go after the graffiti writers more. This guy, this mayor, he seems like, they just seem like, you know, like. Cool. So there's a, still a lot of, I mean, it's because it's worldwide now. You know, back in the 70s, it was like, you know, it was like in Philly. It was like in, uh, yeah. you know, New York. It was just starting to pop up. But now it's everywhere. Yeah. I think in Europe, they like it more. Yeah, they do. For reason, like in New York, like yeah, in Europe it seems to get they're more artsy in Europe, you know, like yeah. the European artists are really good. Like they have yeah. a lot of training, you know, where America, like 
we didn't really go to school. We were always cut out of school. But Europe has like it's a, that tradition, you know, with all the, you know, so there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of schooling there. It really is. So artists there have more. Yeah, there's more freedom. Yeah. And also, I think, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, there was definitely a time where the bat, the, 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 the flame hold was passed on to, to Europe for a piece that kind of, I don't know, I felt like Europe kind of added its contribution pretty well to the overall scene when maybe America wasn't really tuned in so much to the graph side of things, huh? Yeah, look at London now. You know, London has a lot of a lot of street art, a lot of a lot of uh, you know, a lot of neighborhoods are still like yeah. You know, all you know, all painted up. Still, yeah. You know, I know like maybe real estate developers or a lot of people don't like it, but you know, if everything is painted like I like it, you know, like I think you know, I think it looks better like that. I'm with you. Colorful. You know, people like it, you know, like. Yeah. I think it, I think it, it leans into like the the kind of gentrification sort of thing, like rejuvenating community areas, you know, like, I I, I like that Graf can do that. I like, I like both sides of the coin. I like the attack, but I also like the, uh, the celebration, you know? Yeah, but you know, everybody starts off just as a tagger. Mm. And the best best artists. So if it's only legal walls, then it's like, you know, then how are you gonna get to the skill level where there's they're gonna give you a legal wall? Yeah. Yeah, do yeah, exactly. It's like so that would just be in school, you know, but like yeah. a lot of people don't want to learn about art in the school. Like we more wanted to learn like we used to, you know, ride the trains and you know, go to other neighborhoods and look at everything. You know, the train system huge in New York yeah. and you know you can take go from one end to another in like four hours so we're just you know look at everything see what everything's doing and it was like mm. you know, I guess it was kind of like a museum for us you know and then we can get to add to it you know where it's like a museum or a gallery it's kind of like they won't even talk to you walk in there you know what yeah. I mean the museum's like oh you got to sign up for this it's 800 a year to come to our special party and the gallery's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they just look at their computer and they're like what are you? Yeah. you know what i mean like yeah. you know unless you're wearing like a rolex and like pull up in a rolls royce it's, you don't even get a look yeah yeah you know if you look all rich or whatever then they'll like they'll talk to you but if you're like rolling in there like you know like oh here's my here's my graffiti or can you sell it they're like what yeah. You know, like they don't yeah. even know. These galleries don't even know like what graffiti writer is what or this one. They just know like oh Basquiat sold a painting for 140 something million. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like they don't know about this gang happening with that gang and this with that and this and this one had beef with that one and that one. Like they don't know nothing about that. Like you start talking to them about that, like and they just haven't got a clue. Looking this way. Yeah. <laughs> you know? so it's so funny to me when like graffiti writers are talking to gallery owners like yo and this crew and that crew and they're just like you know these people live in like the suburbs somewhere in a big house with like private schools like they're not like yeah yeah it's like two totally different worlds but now street art's selling so that's why that's why the galleries want it yeah you're right you know you know it's the biggest art form in the world now without you know Without question, and the best bit about it for me is the the the, the backstory. The fact that from 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 the moves you've got to make to get into a, a yard, or the moves you've got to make to get into the gallery, you, you know, it's it's just a lot of that's the art. That's the art in itself, and I, I just love I, I love the the stories. It's, you know, it's that's what keeps it. It, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, running around on the tracks and getting chased by the police and hanging on the back of the train and, you know, trying to train surf on top of the train and catching tags and, you know, doing fill-ins and doing pieces. And I might just add at this point, actually, we do not advocate this, but let's remind ourselves, we are talking to Chris Riggs, right? Gay's original dude from back in the 80s. 
tunnel graffiti right i mean you know we're talking about we're talking about an era in graph that is just i, I mean it, there's always room for it to come back around but you are most certainly in the right place at the right time for all of that sort of thing to go down tell us about new york back then new york back then it was like it was um you know, for for graffiti, it was great because it was everywhere, you know, in the 70s and the 80s, yeah. you know. But, um, you know, it had its good and its bad, you know. It's just, it's just, it, you know what it was? It was like, it was like the kids were in charge of the streets. You know, there was no police. The city was broke. So it was like just mayhem everywhere. So every, there was like gangs everywhere and there was just like, Mad. police were really outnumbered so it was like it was just crazy but it was like you know it was a lot of crime too so mm. so you know like you know we were just trying to paint you know we, were, we didn't really we didn't want to get into no gang fights or this and that but when you're a graffiti writer you was like you know if you're in your graffiti crew maybe there's five six seven people you know mm. graffiti crews it's not they don't really get that big because you know it's so few numbers where you know some of the drug gangs would be like six, seven hundred people. Ooh. So you figure like your crew is on one corner, you know, you guys are hanging out, whatever, catching tags, you know, or whatever, you know. So you're hanging out like on your corner with like five, six people, but you you can go, you know, another five or six blocks in another direction. There could be 200 guys there. You know, and it's a drug, drug gang and everybody's armed, you know, and like, if you're not cool with any of them, you got to go walk around them, you know, like, but I was lucky. I was, you know, cool with everybody. And I always like, you know, I always, I always stayed away from the drugs and everything. Like, you know, because back then it was just, you know, my father actually had been shot in 1981 at his, at his business. No way. Like, yeah. Yeah. They were like, because back then they used to have like a lot of Italian mafia, and if you had a business, they would go in and like, like ask you for money. Wow! So he'd be like, "Get the hell out of here!" He was fighting with people all the time. He would he threw down people who had guns and this and that. Like it was crazy back then. And then like, Damn. and then that was it. So I had a younger brother and sister. Mm -hmm. So I cut. So I did graffiti, but like with everything else, I had to like look out for them. Yeah. You know, because it was like the 80s with like crack everywhere, you know, crack, coins, yeah. and it was like, you know, out of that, you know, the art came out, you know, the rap came out from there and the graffiti came out from there. The art came out from there, but it came out. It came out from, you know, the city was a hellhole, you know, yeah. but the art. The thing is, too, is that it was positive when we were like. You know, a lot of people were painting colorful, happy stuff. And the rap music was really happy back then. But this rap music now with all this gangster rap, it all got taken over. Mm. It's gangster, like all this gangster stuff that they're pushing on the kids. Like, mm -hmm. you know, every time a kid goes to jail, they make money off of him. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, and they see the rap videos like, yo, yo, you know, like, like they want you to do that. You know, like it's a uniform. Yeah. That's you know, right. like I had these, I paint, I was painting in the backyard in Miami. I had these, these little, these Miami kids roll up, you know, and they all had like the pants hanging down, you know, like, mm -hmm. and I was like, I was like, yo, where do you think that jail? Like they're all cool, you know? And I was like, and I was like, yeah, but how that started in jail, mm -hmm. how that really started with the pants hanging down with the underwear. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Really started because the gay guys in jail would show the other guys that's that's the style to show that they're gay. No way. Yeah, so if another guy wants to... You know, as soon as I told them that, they started pulling their pants up to their neck, like tying in their belt. Dude, that's too much. Uh, yo, intel, intel, intel. That's crazy. Especially if you're doing graph, if you're a graffiti writer, like... If you're a graffiti writer, you shouldn't be, like, wearing baggy pants, like, hanging your pants down or wearing, like, a sports uniform. You know, wearing, like, a, you know, a jump, you know, how they wear, like, the, uh, you know, like, the Adidas track suits or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wear that because you just look, you're standing out. Because, like, yeah, yeah. 
If anybody's a cop, they're gonna look at you and be like, "Yo, they're up to something." You know, yeah, you got a true. big fat marker. You start writing on something. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's it. Like we used to go to like the vintage stores and we would buy suits and wear like a suit and a tie. Just to blend in, it's kind of like that. Mm. Like nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna look at you, even yeah. if, even if they see you in a suit and a tie catching a tag, it's not gonna make sense to them. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Even it's they looking at that is that they're gonna be like, wait, this guy's wearing a suit and a tie and he's writing his name. It's not gonna be like, yeah, it doesn't add up. If you're wearing like a track suit and you got like a crooked hat. You know what I mean? Then they're gonna yeah. be like, oh, he's breaking the law. But if it's like. A suit and a tie, it's not even like nobody, somebody's catching a tag in a suit and a tie. You know, I think more people yeah. may, you know, it's like, that's the way you dress. Like, look at the, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I do. You're trying to get away with something. Like, yeah, I do know what you mean. You get caught, you know, like, hmm. I mean, I've been, I've been arrested for graffiti, you know, but I should have been arrested a lot more times. Really? You reckon? Yeah, I got arrested. I got arrested, what, for, twice for graffiti. But you, but you, yeah. Because, you know, yeah, but you know, honestly, like, I don't know how freaking Banksy never got caught, but I'm saying for most people, when they tell me, yo, I never got arrested for graffiti, like, it's usually because they didn't do enough of it. To me, people who never, they're like, yo, I never got arrested, I never got arrested. I'm usually like, they probably didn't do enough of it. You know what I mean? That's interesting. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. That's when people stop, people stop after they get arrested. You know, like you keep going. Mm. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see, it acts like a deterrent, doesn't it? But, but you didn't stop even on the first account. You didn't stop. You know what it was with me? Like, I always just loved art. Like, I had to make art. Like, it was in my chest. Like, I had to make art. Otherwise, it would just like, I just had to make it. So, F, so when I was seventeen. We were on a rooftop with nowhere to escape to, mm -hmm. with a staircase going up. So when the cops came up the stairs, we had nowhere to go. We we're like jumping across roofs to try to get away. So I <laughs> fell off the roof. So I was knocked out. Usually if I'm conscious, there's usually no way they could catch me. Because, you know, like I'm six and a half feet tall. Like yeah. I'll grab barbed wire fence with my bare hands. And then duck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we get caught, you know, rather than go get a lawyer and go through the system and all that, like mm. do anything to get away. But I was unconscious. So I woke up in the hospital. But after that, like I had sleepless nights because I was like, I love to do art, but I, like, I'm going to go to jail for making art, you know, mm. like 17 years old. And then like, so then after that, I went, you know, I went to college and I started painting and on canvases and stuff. So, like, you know, it's really boring, you know, compared to like, compared to doing street art, you know, but like, yeah. you know, cause you know, from like maybe like 12 to like 17, like I was full-time graffiti writer, like just oh. getting paint, wow. you know, trying to do pieces here and there, you know, you know, tagging up, like it was just full-time. But after, you know, I fell off the building and all of this, then after that, like, you're not really full time after that. You just go in spurts after that. Yeah, yeah, I feel you. You don't do nothing for six months, and then like, you know, maybe you with your friends one night, and like, yeah. you know, somebody got cans, and then you just start tagging up and everything, and then, you know, and then you feel great again. So it's like, mm. Mm. New York people go in spurts because you know you get caught, then you quit. You got caught, and people. Then yeah. all that blows over. And then years later, people come back, and then yeah, oh. it is like that, isn't it? And I, I, you, like you say, you know, you fall off a building. Never mind the getting arrested, but but to fall off a building and to have that sort of physical and mental impact, you know, that's enough to make you want to kind of just re up for a second and just chill for a second, doesn't it? No, I still, yeah, I still like loved art, and I still wanted to make art. But then, you know, I was going to college and I always knew, like, um, you know, back then you never really thought you could make money off of art. Mm -hmm. No, like, there was no, like, really legal walls and there was no, you know, there was no Instagram, there was no internet. Yeah, nothing like that. Yeah. No, there was, wasn't even really any computers, really. You know, a few people had, like, 
some computers that really didn't do much, you know, but there was no internet. Like, so, you know, you just saw what was in your neighborhood and there was no, like, you know, there was no, there was no way to like just paint a canvas and like put it on Instagram, yeah. Facebook or something. That was just like, like back then it was like, if the gallery didn't take you in the gallery, that was it. You, you know, there was no place, there was no, no. internet. So there was no way around the gallery, you know, like, you know, like now, you know, people will go on, go on, uh, you know, Instagram or whatever, or they could post their artworks, you know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. try to sell it. But nothing, but still, like, the galleries are still, like, you know, because the galleries have connections. That's the thing, you know, like. Yeah. They they got the money connections, haven't they? They got the, they got the, the, the buyers. Yeah, yeah, they have, like, yeah, they know who... They, they know who the buyers are so you know uh -huh. it's really what you got to have you know like yeah. people go on instagram you know and they buy you know they buy a million followers and then they get yeah thousand followers and they have a million five thousand followers and it's like yeah you no know, but it's like or but it's like you know it's honestly it's better to have one person yeah you have one freaking big collector who loves your art who and that's it Will buy painting from you every month or something like that. Like, yeah, I was only talking about this the other day. I can't remember. I was using it as an uh, as an analogy, I guess. And I said to I said to somebody, you know, it isn't how many, it's who. Like when you think about Banksy, and you know, for Banksy's an example only by name and default, but with anybody, yourself included, I would imagine that there's a there's a number that you can probably guesstimate within the you know hundred thousand per hundred thousand that you could say, right, well, there's about 10 real people there that I'd really need to show my art to. The rest is just, they're observers. They, they're kind of, they're just on watchers. They're fans. They're, but they, they're not the real money people. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm sure Banksy has a lot of that as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, like with Banksy, like, I don't know why a lot of people, a lot of, you know, street artists or graffiti writers, like they may not like him, but, you know, he's he 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 actually helped the street art gra graffiti community because mm. he bring it more into the galleries. Yeah. You know, like look, I've I, I like know everybody in New York. You know, from, from 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 you know, I've been I've been in that scene for so long, probably mm. like forty years already. Mad, yeah. you know. So everybody there's not one of them who who wouldn't tag up on a canvas and sell that canvas that's there's right. a million people like oh i wouldn't sell my canvas that's a seller yo come on honestly let's say somebody would tag up on a canvas and get ten thousand dollars for it yeah, yeah. bullshit there's not one person that would not take that money for that tag you know like yeah the paintings ain't selling if it's not selling it'd be like oh i don't care that's a sell i'm not gonna do that but like who's not gonna take 10 grand for a tag yeah and you know what you know what chris you've got a really good point there because the people that i some some of which you have been on the show ironically the people that do suggest those kind of undertones in their conversation like as if it's not kind of keeping it real i also take credit for those people that they've been doing it long enough that they, you know, they could very well make significant money if they chose to, because they've got the legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, uh, which is ironic. Uh, I mean, it's evolving. Like if it's, if it's in the gallery walls and museum walls, that's great, you know, cause it don't last outside. Hmm. You can paint outside and five minutes later, somebody is jealous and they go cross out the whole thing. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, because it's just like a lot of times maybe people just want the spot. So they'll go put lines through it or something or whatever. But my yeah. my stuff lasts pretty long. You know, I try not to go over people or, mm -hmm. you know, if there's people there, like, you know, like, you know, just, you know, call them or whatever, or, you know. Mm. You know, just be like, you know, like, like the landlord, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like, if I don't paint it, like somebody else, they're going to just have somebody else paint it gray or whatever, you know. Yeah. It's still, like, at least it's being used for a mural. <laughs> but, you know, people get mad, you know, if they have, 
if they have some tags there or some fillings there and then you paint a mural there. So it's like, mm. that's like the street art, I guess like the street art, you know, graffiti thing. Yeah. Whatever. But I've done, you know, I've done my graffiti. You know, I've been arrested for graffiti twice and, you know, it just has to evolve. Like, you know, yeah. I'm going to be 60 years old and still like getting, stealing pain and jumping turnstiles and running from cops and climbing fences at 60, you know, by the time you're 60, you're going to sit, sit in your house and do a canvas and relax, you know, like. Yeah, I think, you know what I think happens, Chris, and this is just, I mean, maybe I'm generalizing slightly, again, you know, the, the people that are hardcore and do their thing, they they make a good living out of doing it, but um, that small percentage you talk about there, that that, you know, would they go and do that lifestyle all their lives when we go back to the conversation we had there about the gangs the 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 confrontation the the, the heroes the people that just interrupt that creative space it's going to burn you out it, it inevitably you know you you can't be no matter what age you are there will come a moment where you'll probably be just as well happy chilling with your new girlfriend in her new apartment and forgetting that <laughs> Let's leave the art behind because this feels a lot more cozier. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, like, it comes from, I think it comes more from, like, I think people paint more when they're aggravated about something. For sure. You know, if you're in a rela- if you're in a good relationship and you're just chilling with your girl or whatever, like, I think then you do, like, less graffiti. But yeah. I feel like... If there's like crazy stuff going on in your life, if like if your girl's like yelling at you for whatever reason or mm-hmm. or something like that, then like you'll go out and do some graph. You know what I mean? Like I would say, like I would say, right? I gotta get out of here. Go do some graffiti. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just gonna go and be busy. She thinks you're going to see someone else, but you're not. You're just going to see the the can lovers. But you know what's mad is that, um, I mean, listen. I think we're all tainted with it. I, for one, sometimes I lean close to that fire just to get the aggression swelling and you just fight. You just, you know, to, you could have like 150,000 followers on any Instagram or anything, but you are performing to an audience of one. You're going to see them and you're going to get, this is for you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, I guess that's what, yeah, it was, I guess, you know, it was like an old Instagram, you know, because like, you know, if you're going to paint something on a train station, you know, in New York City, it could be 500,000 people take that train. Yeah. 200,000 people, you know, so the same in London, you know, yeah. Tube. you know, if you, if you, I mean, it's, you know, like. If you sneak into a couple of lines, you know, you do a couple of fill-ins on this line, a couple of fill-ins on that line, you know, like, you know, people are going to see your name, you know, like, mm. especially, you know, people who look at all of it, they'll see your name and, you know, like, then you exist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, you know, even with the online stuff, it's like the raw graffiti, it does the best. Yeah. Always. You'll see some raw graffiti. It'll be some millions and millions of views, like studio art and like gallery art. Yeah. Like people still, I mean, it's exciting. It's fun, you know, like, yeah. I don't know, you know, like, what are you supposed to do? You know, tell kids not to do it or don't do it. You know, it's dangerous. You could get killed. Like, you could get killed doing everything you're supposed to do. If you do everything you're supposed to do, you probably get killed, you know, like. (laughs) Yeah, it's so true. You know, go to school. All right, listen to everything the government says. Government says, join the army. Okay, you join the army. Yeah. Go fight for your country. You're in Iraq. You get blown up. You're dead. Yeah. You'll have, at least go tagged up on something instead. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I hey, listen. That has a lot. That resonates a lot. Yo, because forever, we can use examples decades our own, our own families, our parents, people. Has the system ever worked for them? Not entirely. Is it the same story, the same narrative, 
played and told over and over again, yes. And do we actually win anymore? No. To do what you want to do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, you might as well do what you want to do. I mean, like, like all of this where everybody's so afraid and staying home and like so afraid and can't go next to nobody and just, oh, I'm going to yeah. die, I'm going to die. Look, we're all going to die. Yeah. People ain't living. You got to live. Right now in London, mm. everybody's a graffiti writer in London. Yeah. Everybody. So <laughs> thank God I was a graffiti writer because I can still go outside and walk around. And if the cops roll up on me, I'm going to be gone. I'm not yeah. sitting there getting a thousand dollar ticket because I drank a coffee next to the beach. Yeah, for real. You walk to the beach and you're drinking a coffee walking on the beach. Like that there's nobody there. You're you're not affecting nobody. And then nah. and they start like throwing people in vans and this and that. People better start learning how to run and jump fences. Like, you know, like no. we don't stick around for the police. As soon as police come, boom, we're out. Like you don't start Blah blah blah. Like Man. you can't deal with them. What are they doing? They're like calling more. Oh, we need backup. We need backup. Send another fifty. You know, we got a guy here not listening to us. Yeah, 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 yeah. In London now, everybody's a graffiti writer. You got to these fucking rules. They're crazy. They don't even work. You know, and yeah. and then everybody making the rules. They all none of them are obeying the rules. They're all like, oh, you stay home, and then they find them on some island somewhere in the Caribbean. Yeah fucked up yeah or they're having parties or they're in this restaurant she's fucked up they're like all right you slaves stay home but we're gonna go out and have a good time like yeah 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 the all the little people gotta stay in their house like i think i think graffiti writers in their house they ain't you know i'll, be, I'll go out wherever i want I even if i have to get on a submarine like they ain't gonna stop me from going nowhere <laughs> be locked down yo that's what i'm saying the lock, the term lockdowns from jail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yo, people don't see that. People don't see what's going on. It's, this is about control. It's, they don't care about the virus. No. If the government cared about, look, if the government cared about people dying, when the virus was the worst, could you still go buy a pack of cigarettes? Mm -hmm. Two seconds, you could get a pack of cigarettes. Over yeah. the next hundred years. It's something like over a billion people are going to die from smoking cigarettes. Yeah, that's right. There you go. You know, how many people died from the virus? 3,000? And they were all like 90 years old and they all had this condition. That You'll thank God for graffiti. Right? A lot of people don't want to tell kids to do graffiti. Like, Yeah. I tell yeah. kids, look, live your life. Go do, go do some graffiti. You know, like, what are yeah. they going to do? Sit in their house and be afraid and just play video games and just just look at girls on, on the computer and not like, you know, not have a girlfriend and not go out and not paint nothing and not do nothing. And it's like, go out and freaking have a life, especially these young people. Like, yeah. it's crazy. Like, <laughs> they're not helping nobody. They, they're they going to kill the population. They yeah. kill the population. They're not going to. It's like, it's not really that bad. You got to be 100 years old and have diabetes and this and that. It's like. You know, it's not even the virus that's killing people. It's all that freaking junk food. Yeah. Food and all this people sitting on the couch, not getting no exercise, not yeah. getting no sun. Yeah. If you go out and get sun, you're not getting vitamin D. The virus is going to get you quick. You got to get sun. Yeah. Same with same with being inside, you know, you, you have, your respiratory system of just being inhaling the same air from the same pocket of space all the time it's the same vibe you know like it did nothing you know it was, it was like on the biggie smalls album you know laying you you look pretty stupid lying on the deathbed dying of nothing it's kind of a it, you got to go and experience some shit. we're all gonna die <laughs> we're all gonna die no matter what but you know who's gonna live not everybody's gonna live exactly these people are these people are people are thinking themselves into being sick yes like I've seen it. Like if you watch the news all day, you just think you're sick. Yeah. You go to the hospital. Everybody there is sick. You know, of course you're yeah. gonna, of course you're gonna get sick. But now everybody's graffiti right? You see these old ladies trying to drink a cup of coffee, and the cops grab them and throw them in a van. Mm. You know what they did in New York? They they opened. This is crazy. In New York City, they opened the prisons. You know, like, and it wasn't only. 
they weren't only letting out like shoplifters and stuff. They were letting out like murderers, rapists. Like they opened the prisons and they let everybody out. Stop it. It's a big spike in crime in New York. Why'd they do that for? Because they they're like, oh, we have to let all the prisoners out so they don't get coronavirus. But then, oh my God. An old lady drinking a coffee on the beach, they grab you and throw you in a van. So it's like. <laughs> Man, I, you know, I, I stand from a, f- I mean, Britain's pretty fucking bad, but I heard the lockdown is crazy there. It's crazy, but, but at the same time, man, I, I feel for my fellow American friends, you know, people like yourself included that I feel like, yo, like you guys are good people. You always, do you know what I mean? And it just, we're it, English I, over here. That's what yeah. people don't realize. America, we started, we're just, what language? We, I'm not speaking American. I'm speaking English. For real. People forget history. Look, England started America. Yeah. You know, yeah. my name, my family's from England. Riggs is from, we're from North England. Uh, the North England, South Scotland area. That's amazing. That's amazing. Of course. It makes sense. Yeah. We're all from England. Like America, uh, England started America. Yeah, yeah. It just hurts me. It's called New England. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yes. Damn. Yeah. And then New York City used to be New Amsterdam. New York City used to be New Amsterdam. It did? Yeah, at one point. It was <sighs> called New York City used to be called New Amsterdam. But we speak English here. We don't speak. Yeah. You know, we're not speaking American. No, 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 no. That's the thing. I just want it to be normal for you guys. The, 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 the turbulence of, you know, ever since I've been a kid. You know, it's, it's always been something that's, you know, stirring the pot. And it's like, yeah, like, and to think that you, you, you know, you created some of the most craziest art forms ever. Like, you know, jazz, rock and roll, you know. Freedom creates art. Yeah. Creates. That's why all this lockdown stuff and controlling everybody, that doesn't create anything. Nothing. Like in these communist countries, like, you know, they can, you know, they could take something that's built already and they could have, you know, slaves working for a dollar an hour or whatever they get, 25 cents an hour and just copy stuff. But they can't invent stuff. You know, it could be copied over there, but which is, which is, that doesn't work either. Like, The best system is when everybody gets paid a lot. That's the best system. Because yeah. then when everybody's getting paid a lot, then then everybody can go to everybody else's business. Mm. It creates like a big like that, that's how it that's how it works in Switzerland. Like like Switzerland, you know, the waiter, the guy cutting the hair, they all have million dollar houses. Because the money's circulating. You do a snowball effect. But it's so rich. Like, you go to a cafe in Switzerland, it's like, you know, you get a coffee and one thing. If you're with somebody else, it's like $50. Mm. You know, so there's so much money going around where this system where they're trying to give people, you know, two cents in other countries to make all this stuff, it's like, then they can't. Then the workers can't buy anything. Yeah. An economy if the workers have no money to buy anything. But you've done a lot of art in there. Yeah, you can go, you can go, you know, street artists, artists, we can go put everything up in the street, all the complaints in the street where, you know, now the internet's censored, a lot of stuff is censored. This is some bullshit too. Actually, I just I was just gonna say, you've you've been to a lot of communist countries. You've you've I mean you've you you painted um Russia and a whole bunch of places and from what Russia's more Russia's capitalist now though. They yeah. live in Russia. But I've been to Cuba where it's more yeah. and I've been to Belarus. Belarus is more communist. And I was in communist Yugoslavia a lot as, mm-hmm. as a kid. And you know, Cuba, you know, parts of Central and South America, but it it really doesn't work because you know. Look, socialism and communism and all of that, like the idea sounds great. But the thing is, is like with that type of system, you're just expecting everybody to work as hard as they're going to work. Yeah. Yeah. People, 
people are really, you know, like, so that system people just try to get, you know, there's part of the spoke and the wheel and just do as little as possible, you know, and just get the check. And then gives, yeah, exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it doesn't progress, does it? It doesn't get bigger than that. Yeah, if you're not going to get paid more, why work hard? Why work, yeah. It just doesn't, it just doesn't work. And then, you it's know. Quite, it's mad, mad thinking that someone thought if that If you're going to go to school to be a doctor, you know, there's only, there's not that many, there's there's not that many good humans out there that are going to go to school, you know, to become a doctor and spend hundreds of thousand dollars and go to school, huh? you know, for 15 years and interns and all of this. And then. And then they're going to start being a doctor for free. No, they want to get paid. They want a million dollars a year. You know, they're not going to. Yeah, that's their angle. They want to, you know, they're hacking through, you know, developing their skills. That's <laughs> like, so then usually like if you look at the old, the communist systems where they had them before, like with Stalin and Mao and all of them, like they wind up having to kill a lot of people because the people start rebellion. Yeah. You know, like that's what that's what usually happens. I mean, like there's nobody taking a raft to go to a communist country. Mm. Yeah, true. Taking rafts to leave communist country. Yeah. Nobody's nobody's sneaking into a communist country. In the communist country, they don't let the people leave. Everybody's yeah. trying to get out of there. So if it's so good, why is everybody trying to run out of there? Yeah, it's true. A lot of people, a lot of the young people, they sold this lie that they're going to get everything for free. And, mm-hmm. you know, entrepreneurs and rich people, they're all evil and blah, 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 blah. And like, you know, like you deserve this and you deserve that and because of this and because of that. Mm-hmm. They got to keep people divided. You know, 200 people control the world. So they got to keep all 700 billion fighting for this, fighting for that. It's like the Crips and the Bloods. Like, look at the Democrats and the Republicans. You know, the Republicans are red and the Democrats are blue. It's like the Crips and the Bloods, you know. Damn, you called it. Wow. It's a red. It's like, it's just like a gang thing, you know, like. Oh, my God. Focused on, oh, it's that guy. It's this guy. You know, it's not, it's not. But the people at the top, top, like nobody's looking at them. Everybody's like, you know, so focused on all the the news is like pushing all this stuff. Like, wow, you just fried my brain. When America's down, when America's down, a lot of people are going to be looking. Because when you're down, that's when people looking to to kick you. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people right now, like. You know, they see America's all divided and this and that. Like, look at Iran is like building more nukes right now. Yeah. Like Iran, you know, they weren't supposed to make nukes. Now they're building nukes mm-hmm. oh, full time. Then you got the monarchy in England. Mm-hmm. You think they're not mad that we broke off from them? Yeah. yeah. That never ends. Trust me, they're like, they're like those damn Americans. They, they broke off from England. You know, there was a freaking war with England. Yeah. The English went and they burnt in 18, I think it's 1865, they burnt down the White House. They were so mad at the Americans. Yeah, for real? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at the history, that was so, it was crazy. Then they were screwed? <laughs> that was the thing. They were like graffiti writers Ooh. because in the old days, you used to have to go to the front line and you would have to stand there. You couldn't like hide behind a tree or nothing. Remember you see those movies where they show the old wars everybody had to stand mm, mm. and then you weren't allowed to like shoot like the top brass like the majors and the generals they would just stay on the horse and be, you yeah. allowed to shoot them they would just line all the poor people up to shoot each other but then the americans were more like gorillas that's why that's why they were able to break off from it wow. because they were like gorillas you know with george washington they were like mm-hmm. started doing like guerrilla tactics Damn. Against like the rules of the war. So they were basically like graffiti writers, you know, like going against the grain. Yeah. So it's in our blood, you know, like to be, you know, gorillas. Cause you're like a gorilla, you know, like you're sneaking out at night. You're like trying to blend in. Like, you know, you're trying to like bomb the system, you know? Yeah. 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 God. Yeah. You're trying to like tag up on as much stuff as you can and like get back home, you know, been doing something. 
like mm-hmm. tagging up is easy. You know, you just tag up and you run out of there. But if you're trying to do something nice, you're trying to stay there for two or three hours, you know, and then now with the cell phones, at least in the 80s, there was no cell phones and a lot of the pay phones were broken. So yeah, cracked. Yeah. What well, do you reckon that do you reckon that's contributive to people getting caught and, and shit like that? Yeah, I think it used to be much easier because, first of all, back then everything was tagged up on. So if you did a tag, you didn't really see it. You know, if something's mm. clean and you do a tag, mm. you see it more. But if everything's tagged up and you do a felon or a tag, who's really going to see it? But now, you know, everybody has a cell phone. Oh, they're like, oh, there's spray paint over there. Like, even yeah. if it's illegal, while they call, they yeah. can't. Like, they're just like, oh, like, you know, back then, there was just pay phones and yeah you know people we would if we saw people looking at us we just kept painting you know now you can't they'll be like hey i'm gonna call they're doing graffiti over here or whatever but snitches yeah but you know it's i guess yeah yeah i think it's much it's you know it's much harder now and then there's all they got all these cameras everywhere now like yeah. Back then, there was just a few cameras, and we would like paint over the camera. You know, we'd paint over their lens thing. Yeah, that still happens. <laughs> it still happens over here. That definitely does. Um, but yeah, I know you're, ex- you're you're totally right. I feel like when there is a level of cultural appropriation that's going on with graph, where it's okay to do it in one place, but it's not okay to do it the other, and that kind of doesn't work with graph, does it? Um, yeah, you know, like in New York, it's in certain neighborhoods, like you won't, it, it's, yeah, it's always kind of been stuck to certain areas, yeah. you know, because, um, if you have a, a area with a lot of houses, like just private homes, mm-hmm. that's really not the type of area for it, you know? <laughs> yeah, true. You know, cause people... Like, there's still rule. Like, graffiti writers still have rules. Not everybody obeys the rules, but, like, you know, we're not supposed to tag up on people's personal cars. We're not supposed to tag up on people's personal houses. Like, it's supposed yeah. to be more, like, you know, it used to just be, oh, we were only should hit trains. Like, we didn't want to hit any walls. And then it was just trains and train station walls. And then, yeah, like, they'll paint trucks. You know, yeah, it's like a business truck. They'll paint that, but like you're not supposed to paint a car. Do you think Joe Public know this code of conduct? You know, if they really knew that the the kind of unwritten rules that we're taught, which is you're right in saying these are these we understand these rules, but do you think Joe Public, you know, just to kind of dull their concerns and that that behind the the you know behind the back. Um, uh, noise of, uh, of of councils and boroughs saying, "Yo, they're gonna they're gonna destroy your neighborhoods." You know, if they knew, if Joe Public knew, then perhaps there wouldn't be such a concern. Um, yeah, because then that yeah, that's a problem. Not everybody always obeys the rules, you know, especially yeah. So yeah, true. Sometimes you get some crazy kids, and they'll go tag up like on a church or a synagogue or a mosque or something like that, and then it's all over the news. It's yeah. like you can go paint. You can go paint a thousand nice murals, nice pieces. You know, you could be painting that for forty years, and then you won't get no news in London. Mm. As some kid goes and tags up on a church or a mosque or a synagogue, it's all over the news. This news channel, that news channel. Mm. you know what about True. the guys who were painting nice pieces for 30 40 years they don't put them up you know they don't get no news whatsoever unless they do yeah. something bad you know yeah then they'll yeah. get on like something you know but if it's like it's a, it's a, that's the thing like too you know it's like the news only mm. wants bad news they don't want any good yeah. news yeah they don't want it they don't want it and again, just that's going back to the apathy that we talked about with what hip hop was in the beginning. It was joyous. It was positive. It was get out the hood, get out of the ghettos, get away from the drugs. But now this apathy is like transcended. It, it's it's that season. It's that season in our lives that's that's like that. I don't know if it's true, but there's rumors that the guys who are owning the record company shares were buying shares of prison stocks. So they were pushing. 
I know it's <gasps> true. But Whoa. I could oh. I could believe it because they do yeah. shit like that on Wall Street. <laughs> like they'll try to crash a currency and crash a whole country to make money over them. Wow. It's like that's why they push in all that gangster rap is because the same executives at the record companies were buying shares of prison stocks. That's in- that. <sighs> so it was like a, but um, yeah, it used to be like if you look at the old rap, like when it originally first started coming out, it was like, it was like happy. It was positive shit. The lyrics. It wasn't all like, like we wanted to get away from that. The city was hell. People were looking for something more mm-hmm. happy. You know, it wasn't like. It wasn't, but then all this like gangster rap came came about, and it's like, yo, these yeah. kids in the projects, like, where's all these drugs coming from in the pro? You know, like, mm. like the drugs get brought to the projects. Yeah, and there's rumors too that the that who's ever bringing them there is 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 like some part of the government anyway. Yeah, the government's making money off of that. Then people True. get arrested. They're making money off of that. And the law is making money. The police are making money. It's all like... Because music ain't making enough money right now, so there's got to be some sort of kickback coming from somewhere. That's a really good point. Yeah, they want to control the culture. You know, they'll take it over. Mm. They'll take it... It's been... I got think it's been... I think it was more independent. It's been taken over. You know, like punk rock. You know, they took over punk rock. Punk rock was more free, and now it's like... You know, it's more like toned down stuff. You know, like yeah, you're 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 definitely a product of your environment, Chris. Like your your output, it has it. I mean, you know, Herring, um, Warhol. Uh, I mean, geez, like there's these n- n- tones to it, but obviously it's its own identity. The there is certainly a. It ha- I can see it in a in a city aesthetic and. There's a punk vibe to it. It's 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 non it, it's free, and it, it of course there's spray paint as the medium, but it, it certainly hangs its hat to a an era. Do you know what I mean? A time. It's tags, and some of the some of the paint I use is like more eighties drippy paint. Mm. I like using the new paint. You know, the new paint it doesn't have any drip. It has less drips. You know, like. The Montanas and all of that, but I use that. Mm. But like to get that drippy '80s look, I'll use like the Rust-Oleum cans, which basically nobody uses anymore. They still available? This is a naive me coming in here. They still available? Yeah, yeah, they're available in America. It's just with me, like I grew up as a kid with the Rust-Oleums, <laughs> and it was always like Rust-Oleum was like the good, good paint, you know. And I always loved Rust-Oleum, so now <laughs> it's like. I'm a kid in a candy store at rust and... <laughs> you got them all now. Like, <laughs> Yeah, I do like the rust Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's like I got them all now. I, I love using them. And, you know, you know, the new cans are great too, but... Um, they're kind of conf- they're kind of uniform though. I mean, I, you know, this is only from a naive uh, objective. When I look at... When I, when I look at Graph now, it's almost like that the paint kind of makes things fall in line a little bit sometimes i feel like even some people's styles disappear a little bit you know i used to, there's certain people's hands yeah not the same colors it's just the same um yeah yeah yeah. i can't explain it every yeah everything starts looking the same after a while that's Kinda why does. you can yeah it always happens with art you know like if you look at art from the 60s or the yeah. 70s or the 50s you know it all it all starts. It all starts looking the same. It, the only thing I can compare it to is, you know, making music with analog and outboard stuff compared to making music with Ableton or Pro Tools and everything in the box. Do, do you mean there's like there's two different worlds here that have a different texture and feel, and it totally depends on when you got into music. Yeah, yeah, I see what you're saying. It de- it develops together, you know. Mm. It's the good thing about it. Like people look at all this stuff and look at this stuff and it develops and True. you know. I mean it's really went a long way. You know, if you look at the characters from like the 70s. Oh wow, yeah. It For was real. just kind of like, you know, a fella, like I'm with you. Know, you. Now it's like real they paint realism and crazy. everything else. Like 
I'm I'm always inspired by the cat the, the illustrative and oh man like in the caps you can get not for one second am I dogging the idea because I think progress has to happen and and young artists like god like would we want them to go backwards to where other artists had been of course not I love the I love the different caps and the varieties and being able to do that watch when people do that shit is incredible yeah yeah the caps like yeah people don't realize like we used to have to like there was like detergent caps yeah. spray caps so we used to so even when we got the cans the cans the caps and the cans weren't any good so then we would have to like go to like some store and find the caps i mean it's great now they just you know you could just order the caps and get the caps like yeah. We have to like go to stores and steal caps off of like detergent cans, and yeah. you know they would see like four or five kids on the island like trying to take the cap. <laughs> it's a whole day just trying to get caps. But yeah, next time I come to London, we'll go have a we'll go have a pint somewhere if they open or not open. Damn right we will. We got to right. open up a bar out there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Big shout out to Billy VIP, man. VIP holding it down. They're definitely the spot. That guy's the best. I love that guy. That's my guy. That's my Don. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the best. I got to see him again too. I can't wait to get back to London. Hey, listen, the throne's ready, man. When you're ready, get on over here. We'll hang out. Sounds great. It's good talking to you. You too, Chris. Big shout out to Chris Riggs inside the place. Killer Keller podcast did it again. Let's stay in touch, my brother. All right. Thanks a lot, man. It was good talking to you. Have a great day. You too, my brother. Stay lucky. All right. Peace out. Peace.